Driving with John is coming through! Hey, welcome to Driving with John. So you got a sent to Cassandra to take your DOT physical drug test and possibly a performance screening, right? So I'm gonna tell you exactly what's gonna happen, all right? Not exactly, but you know, I've been to Cassandra quite a few times with different companies throughout my years and I'm gonna share my experience with you and hopefully it will help you out. Before I get started, I do wanna say two things really quick. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do that and make sure you hit that thumbs up. All right, let's get on with the video. So, you're going to Cassandra. You're gonna walk in, you know, you've been, if you have never been to a Cassandra before, it looks like any other like urgent care type of place. You walk in, you know, you do know what you're there for and what company you're there with, and they tell you to take a seat. They're gonna fill out your, um, back history, health history on a form, and probably also on your phone. They do both now, I don't know. Sometimes it's just one or the other, and sometimes it's both, but so you're prepared. You're gonna to need to know your health history. So, after you get called back, let me get comfortable here for a second. After you get called back, they're going to take you back and you're probably gonna do your drug test first. Now, you might be taking a urine test or a hair follicle test. A urine test, it's pretty straightforward. You can't have anything in your pocket. You can't wear a hat. You can't, you know, um, take anything into the bathroom with you, just your clothes and the cup. And when you're in there, you know, you're gonna, you're not allowed to wash your hands. You're not allowed to flush the toilet. You have to pull it up to a certain point and then the rest goes in the toilet. Pretty straightforward, like I said. Probably something you've done before. But I'm putting it in here just in case you didn't know. All right, the second drug test that you might have to go through is a hair follicle test. Now this one's a little different. I'm going to preface this by just saying if you can't pass it and you know you can't pass it, don't get tested because you will fail, okay? They're going to take hair either from your underarms, your chest, or your hair. They can also take it from like your arms or your legs if you have enough hair for that. Um, if you decide you want to outsmart the system and shave your body, they're going to tell you that you can't pass and they're going to send you out of there. If you shave everything except for areas you don't want them to take hair from, they will take hair from there. So don't do that, guys. Like I said, if you can't pass, don't take the test. Because what's going to happen is it's going to put a mark on your record and it's going to follow you through your entire career. So... Why, why even go there at all if you know you can't pass? You're going to screw up any chance that you have of ever driving a truck. Just saying. And honestly, you shouldn't be doing that stuff if you're driving a truck anyway. Just my opinion. All right, let's move on. So we've done a urine test, hair follicle test. You're going to go in to your physical after that. Um, you're going to go in with a doctor. Um, they're going to do, you know, take your blood pressure, check your lungs, have you touch your toes, have your, hold your arms out, palms up like that, out to the side. Um, there's a bunch of different things they have you do. Sometimes they'll check your reflexes, um, check you know, your heart rate. They'll look in your mouth, look up in your you know, ears, check everything out there. Um, basically, they just want to see that you're healthy enough to drive a truck. Now, in this section, I'm going to warn everybody because it happened to me. If you're older, like I am, uh, I think the age is 46 or 42. It's either 46 or 42. I'm sure if you look it up, you'll see it. Um, if you if you fall in that age range, anything older than that, if you have a 17-inch neck, if your body mass is larger than, I think, a 33 body mass, um, and if you're a male... Um, those are all risk factors for sleep apnea. They're going to flag you if you have, I think it's three of those risk factors. Risk factors. So if they flag you, you're going to have to go take a sleep apnea test. So if you think there's a chance you might get flagged, you might want to take the test before you ever go because otherwise you're just wasting your time. All right. I'll make a whole different video about the sleep apnea thing. But for now, that's what I want to say about that. So then you get through your physical. You know, you've done all the things the doctor asked you to do. And and uh, they're also going to ask you, sometimes it's in your physical, sometimes it's in the pre-checks before you do your urine test. They're going to check your vision. They're going to check your hearing. How they check your hearing is they have you stand in a corner and they whisper a word and you tell them what you hear, you know. So it's, it's not a hard test. Your vision, they check to make sure that you have 
um, non-corrective lenses. If you have corrective lenses, you have to wear them. And they ask you to read, you know, the, the letters off the gauge. You guys have done that before. All right. Now, I've only experienced this twice. But sometimes they're going to ask you to do a performance screening. And if you see me looking down, it's because I have paperwork on it. Can't show it to you, unfortunately. It has some proprietary information on there. But what I can do is tell you what's on it. So if you have to do a performance screening, basically they're just seeing if you're physically capable of doing the job. So I'm gonna actually read off the things that they're gonna test you for, okay? That way you know, you know what's coming. Um, they're gonna they're gonna check to, to see if your spine's straight. They're going to check your, you know, your stretching abilities, you're gonna have your Move your trunk around, move your neck around to see if there's any problems. Um, once they do all of that, they're, then they're going to send you into, you know, um, you have to do a, not a full sit up. You just got to get your shoulders off the table on um, like, you know, like a sit up. They just want to see you have the core strength to actually sit up. So once you're done with all of that stuff, you're going to um, do your, your uh, hamstring flexibility tests. Um, could be a variety of different ways I could do that. Um, probably step up and step down on stairs. Um, they're going to check your body mechanics to make sure all your knees, elbows, fingers, toes, everything moves normally. Um, then they're going to have you start doing some physical activity. They're going to have you lift 45 pounds five times in five minutes. And you have to lift it you know, so many inches off the ground. It depends on who's giving you the test, I think. Um, then they're going to do it again. Only this time you have to put the the uh, crate that has 45 pounds in it. You have to put it on a shelf and take it off a few times. Um, then they're going to give you like a little sled thing to push. The sled is going to have um, around 80 pounds. And you're going to have to push it and pull it. Five different times. Um, they're going to give you a climbing test. That's the step thing I was telling you about. They're going to put a step that's at least 22 inches high, roughly, and you're going to, have to step up and back down three different times. Once you get done with that, then they're going to do another lift test. Only this is only 35 pounds, but this time you have to lift it over your head. Okay, and then they're going to do the pull test. Basically, they're going to have like a, a like a pull machine and you're going to pull it. Um, it's going to be, it's only going to be 22 pounds and you're going to pull it like five times. It's not that hard. Uh, then you're going to do some squats, uh, three different reps of squats. And you pretty much, if you can do all of that, you pass your physical, uh, physical screening, whatever you want to call it, performance screening. Um, there may be other things that they add in there. I will warn you ahead of time. It's been different a couple of different times that I've went, but gives you a rough estimate guide kind of an idea of what you might go through so i did cover all of the different ones i covered the the drug tests both cut types the physical and the, the performance screening so if you're going to go to concentra just make sure that you wear closed toed shoes and make sure that you bring all your important information with you because if you don't have any of that they're going to send you home immediately and you don't want to waste your time so I hope this helps somebody out, out there that had to go to Concentra to get a DOT physical and drug test and all the other stuff. I really hope it helped. Um, as I said earlier, if you found anything useful in this, in this uh, video, go ahead and subscribe and hit that thumbs up. And to all my trucking buddies out there, make sure you keep your rubber on the road, stay between the lines, stay right side up. And to all my non-trucking buddies out there, just remember, truckers are people too. See you on the next video.